Anarchism in India has never taken the name anarchism, and is relevant primarily its effects on movements for national and social liberation. <laughs> Gandhi and anarchism The local conditions were pertinent to the development of the heavily anarchic Satyagraha movement in India. George Woodcock claimed Mohandas Gandhi self-identified as an anarchist. Gandhi also considered Leo Tolstoy's book, The Kingdom of God is Within You, a book about practical anarchist organization, as the text to have the most influence in his life. <laughs> Bhagat Singh Before 1920, an anarchist movement was represented by one of the most famous revolutionaries of the Indian independence movement, Bhagat Singh. Singh was attracted to anarchism. Western anarchism and communism had influence on him. He studied the writings of Mikhail Bakunin, Karl Marx, Vladimir Lenin and Leon Trotsky. Singh wrote in an article, Singh was involved in the Hindustan Socialist Republican Association and Nojawan Bharat Sabha, translated to Youth Society of India. By the mid-1920s Singh began arming of the general population and organised people's militias against the British. From May 1928 to September 1928, Singh published several articles on anarchism in Punjabi periodical, Kurdi. <laughs> Har Dayal's anarchist activism in U.S. Indian revolutionary and the founder of the Ghadar Party Lala Har Dayal was involved in the anarchist movement in United States. He moved to the United States in 1911, where he became involved in industrial unionism. In Oakland, he founded the Bakunin Institute of California which he described as the first monastery of anarchism. The organization aligned itself with the Regeneracion movement founded by the exiled Mexicans Ricardo and Enrique Flores Magan. Har Dayal understood the realization of ancient Aryan culture as anarchism, which he also saw as the goal of Buddhism. The Ghadar Party attempted to overthrow the British in India by reconciling Western concepts of social revolution, particularly those stemming from Mikhail Bakunin, with Buddhism. <laughs> M.P.T. Acharya M.P.T. Acharya was a contemporary of Har Dayal in London and fellow revolutionary in India House. Like a number of other Indian revolutionaries of the time, Acharya turned to socialism at the end of First World War to aid the Indian cause. However he was disillusioned by the communist movement and by the early 1920s had turned towards anarchism, along with Virendranath Chattopadhyaya. He took an active role in promoting anarchist works in and was contributed at this time to the Russian anarchist publication Rabachi Put. In 1931, he lived in Amsterdam working with the School of Anarcho-Syndicalism. Acharya came to be acquainted in early 1930s acquainted with Marxist-leaning Indian industrialist from Bombay, Ranchadas Bhavan Latvala. Latvala had financed The Socialist, one of the first Marxist periodicals in India. Latvala also financed the translation and publication of many leftist literature including the Communist Manifesto. The British Indian ban on Acharya was lifted in 1935 and he returned to Bombay that same year, where he managed a living as a journalist. During this time, Acharya wrote eight articles during this time which would later be collated to be published as a book called Reminiscences of a Revolutionary. From Bombay, Acharya established correspondence with Japanese anarchist Taiji Yamaga and Chinese anarchist Liu Jinbao. The result of the correspondences led to the three establishing contacts with Commission de Relations de l'Internationale Anarchist Liaison Commission of the Anarchist International. In the following years, Acharya contributed to anarchist publications such as Freedom in London, Tierra y Libertad in Mexico and Contra Current in Paris. He also remained in correspondence with Albert Meltzer for more than 15 years. In the following years Acharya was appointed secretary of the Indian Institute of Sociology, established under Latvala's patronage in the 1930s. In later years, Acharya's influence on the institute saw it adopts a number of statutes in 1947 and subsequently the institute adopted the name of Libertarian Socialist Institute. His views on economic matters were profound and in 1951, Free Society Group of Chicago published his work How Long Can Capitalism Survive? in 1951. Dave Andrews 
Australian Christian anarchist Dave Andrews lived in India between 1972 and 1984. In 1975, he and his wife founded and developed a residential community in India called Ashiana out of which grew Sahara, Shuran and Sahasi, three well-known Christian community organizations working with slum dwellers, sex workers, drug addicts, and people with HIV, AIDS. When Indira Gandhi was assassinated in 1984, thousands of Sikhs were murdered by violent mobs. Andrews resisted this through non-violent methods of intervention. The Andrews were forced to flee India soon thereafter. Topic. See also Socialism in India Indian independence movement Topic. Notes Topic. Further reading The Libertarian, Quarterly, 1951 Bombay, Bombay Socialist Institute the Gentle Anarchists, a study of the leaders of the Sarvadaya movement for nonviolent revolution in India by Geoffrey Ostergaard and Melville Curl, Oxford, Clarendon Press, 1971. The Perennial Appeal of Anarchism, in Polity, Vol. 7, No. 2. Winter, 1974, pp. 234-247 by Michael R. Dillon. 